It is a big day. We are leaving the Atlantic Ocean, basically the Caribbean Sea Atlantic. We're going out of that right now as we're heading into the first lock in the Panama Canal. If you're wondering how to transit the Panama Canal on a sailboat, then this video is for you. I'm Paul Shard, and my wife Cheryl and I are currently home in the studio editing episodes of Distant Shores while we wait until borders open so we can get back aboard. We made an Atlantic to Pacific transit in March 2020, just before the COVID-19 lockdown, which is the reason that social distancing is not being practiced in the video you're about to see. This video is part two in a series of how to transit the Panama Canal on a sailboat. In the previous video, we discussed using an agent and how to find one, and also gave resources if you want to do the paperwork yourself. We also showed what's involved in an ad measurer's inspection and discussed what it costs to transit the Panama Canal in a sailboat. You can find the link to part one here and in the description below. This week in part two, we take you on the first leg of the transit from Cologne to Lake Gatun, but first show you how to find line handlers, train your crew for line handling, how to set up your boat to meet requirements as well as protect it from possible damage during the transit. We also show you how to work with the advisor who is assigned to come aboard your boat for the transit, how yachts are required to raft up and demonstrate some boat handling techniques for locking through. And we do take time out for boat work to show you some of the activities you can enjoy with fellow cruisers. So let's go to Panama. It's February and we're docked at Shelter Bay Marina on the Atlantic side of Panama, right near the entrance to the Panama Canal. We, along with numerous other cruising sailors from around the world, are here preparing our boats to make an Atlantic to Pacific transit of the canal. My name is Juan Hobochetti. I'm the general manager of Shelter Bay Marina. I've been here three years. I'm originally from Puerto Rico, but I am an adopted Panama guy now, so welcome to Panama. Bueno, Shelter Bay, we are a full service marina. Uh, one of our biggest assets is that we are located at the entrance of the Panama Canal. So if you're gonna cross the canal, we're the spot to go to get measured, get your provisionings, and do all the work you need at the vessel. But Panama has a lot to offer, especially to the cruisers. We have a full service yard. We're located in what used to be an, a US Navy base. So there's a lot of trails where you can walk around and see the old batteries, the old army, what the army left. A lot of natural wildlife, birds, monkeys, sloth bear. We even have a croc on the water swimming, so you gotta watch out, don't go to the water. I went to the water yesterday and I think I saw it, so I'm not going back in. Oh my so no, no way. <laughs> yeah, but it's a, it's a lovely place. Panama is a lovely country. And at Shelter Bay, we try to, to showcase what Panama has to offer. We typically welcome over 1,600 vessels per year. And we, me, are the face of Panama. So it's important for us to, to, to get to know the cruisers and just greet them on the slips and just tell them what they can do over in the city. Wonderful. The Panama Canal is 44.3 miles in length and joins the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean at this narrow isthmus between North and South America. It takes two days for a typical cruising yacht to do the transit. One night is spent on a mooring on Gatun Lake. Since arriving in Panama a few days ago, we've had our inspections, received our ship identification number, and paid our fees, which we discussed in part one of this video series. Now we have to assemble our crew for the transit, make sure our diesel engine is tuned up, and wait to hear if the transit date we requested two weeks from now will be granted. While we wait, we take a taxi tour with some other cruisers to get a look at the canal. We start by getting an overview from the new bridge to Cologne, which replaced the old ferry service. From here you see the first set of locks on the Caribbean side. We'll be using the Gatun locks on the right in the old canal. To the left, where you see the cruise ship, are the Agua Clara locks, recently built to handle large vessels such as container ships and cruise liners. We check it out. On June 16, 2016, the expanded canal opened providing a third lane for Neo Panamax dimension vessels, which are controlled by tugboats in the lock chambers. Neo Panamax ships include large passenger ships, liquefied petroleum and natural gas carriers, bulk carriers, tankers, container ships, and car carriers, 
offering these large ships a fast passage through the canal. Smaller ships making transit through the old canal are positioned by steel cables managed ashore by small locomotives affectionately called mules. Even smaller boats like ours are controlled in the old canal by hand lines from the boat to canal personnel ashore. We'll be talking more about line handling later. And now take a look at the old canal. Three times. You get out and take a look at the beginning of the canal. There's somebody going in right there. We're all feeling better that we've seen the locks before arriving here on our own boats. The old canal has been in operation since 1914, and the locks in it have two lanes, so ships can travel in both directions at the same time. It's going to be exciting coming through here. From the Atlantic side, there are three chambers in the Gatun locks, which will take us up to Lake Gatun. We'll moor here for the first night. On the second day, we'll cross the lake, go through Culebra Cut to the Pedro Miguel and Miraflores locks, which will take us down to the Pacific Ocean. This is our first real look at Gatun Lake and the locks. So we're getting a pre-visualization look around here, see how it all works. This is Gatun Lake, created by damming the Chagres River to raise the water level to what we see here. The French first started construction on the Panama Canal back in 1881 with a plan to dredge the river deeper and make a cut all the way across Panama. The French abandoned the project and the Americans took over in 1904. The Americans realized a dredged sea level canal would be a problem. The key to building the Panama Canal was the Chagres River. By damming the river, a new lake would appear 85 feet up in the Panamanian jungle. This eliminated much of the digging for a big part of the canal route, so ships could now go right up the river to Gamboa, where it meets the mountain range and crosses the continental divide that joins North and South America. This meant digging out the Culebra Cut. So the Panama Canal journey involves going up three locks to enter the lake, then crossing the newly created Lake Gatun through the Calabra Cut and through three more locks to take us back down 85 feet to the Pacific Ocean. As we leave, we pass the dam and see the spillway into the Chagres River, which flows to the Atlantic, yet also the Pacific via the locks. It's carnival in February in Panama, and trolls are roaming Shelter Bay Marina in celebration. Just one more excuse for sailors here to get together for a potluck supper and barbecue. What's happening tonight? I have no idea. Every day, crews are arriving and leaving to start their transit through the Panama Canal, so it's a chance to say hellos and goodbyes. Yeah. Always a bittersweet moment when friends are leaving. Eva, it's been just so great having you aboard. It's been a fantastic experience. I've loved oh, every minute of it. I'm so glad. We're going to miss you. Pleasure to have you aboard. You're excellent, just always cheerful and ready to jump in and help. Yeah. Even and down in the galley, incredible. Yes. So recommendations, anybody who needs Yeah, anyone have, who needs crew. Yeah, no job's too small. Yeah. <laughs> no job's too small. Yeah. All right. Okay. We'll safe See travels. Bye. Take care. Keith, who sailed with us from the Bahamas, is not going far. He's going to be a line handler for our friends aboard Carid before he flies home to Scotland. Okay. <laughs> so he's not gone far. A nice transition for Our friends aboard our sister ship Kered are ready for their transit, and along with Keith as crew, have also hired two professional line handlers, plus the necessary hand lines and fenders, through the help of our agent. You ready, look? Don't worry about that, I can just pull the strings off my friend. He doesn't speak English. This way they meet the requirement of having four adult line handlers plus a helmsman aboard for the transit. Payment is about 120 US dollars per professional okay. line handler for the two day trip which includes transportation to and from the boat. So we'll see you in a bit. 
See you on the other side. See you on, See you the, on the other yeah. side, as they say. <laughs> All right. You must also provide meals and sleeping accommodation for line handlers throughout the transit. See you in the Pacific. <laughs> Bye -bye. Tell me about the line. It's all clear. Line is clear. Have a 12 feet. Okay. Clear. There is a notice board at the marina and crew banks online where other sailors wanting to try a transit before taking their own boat through the canal make themselves available as line handlers. It really isn't difficult to find good crew. Bon voyage! <laughs> We'll be watching our friends on AIS and also on the webcams along the canal. This is Sanctuary coming into the fuel dock as previously arranged, over. Okay, copy that. We have four new crew members arriving to join us for the transit, and the first to fly in are Dave from Indiana and Eric from Annapolis, Maryland. Both are ex Navy, so are really interested in the history of Fort Sherman, the old U.S. naval base that is now Shelter Bay Marina. The Fort Sherman Cinema is now a busy sail loft and we're surrounded by old barracks and batteries being overtaken by jungle. The wildlife is fabulous and as a result the four of us spend hours exploring with our cameras while we wait for Margaret and David who will complete our crew in a few days. Construction of Fort Sherman began in January 1912 as a phase of the original 1910 defensive plans and was named after former commanding general of the U.S. Army, William Tecumseh Sherman. The two guns were down there, and now the jungle has grown up over the far side here. So the ammunition comes out on this railway and then gets shifted over. to put in the guns which were here. Fort Sherman was the primary defensive base for the Caribbean sector of the canal and was also the center for U.S. jungle warfare training. The fort included 23,000 acres of land, about half of which was covered by jungle. The developed areas included housing, barracks for 300, a small airstrip, and various recreational areas. Fort Sherman and its Pacific side partner Fort Amador were turned over to Panama by the U.S. in 1999. There are many roads and ruins remaining, which makes this an interesting place for walking and exploring. David and Margaret have arrived, and we've been training for line handling for our transit. So guys, what's going on here? We're learning bowlines today. We have to do bowlines to attach the uh, messengers that we're going to get on the canal. So we want everybody to know how to do that. So we've created a loop. Yeah. And a rabbit comes out of the hole, goes behind a tree, he sees a snake, he goes, crap, back down the hole. And then the rabbit comes out. And then you have a bowline. And so we'll be making loops for the messenger lines. Is that the idea? This is so that someone will throw us a messenger line and then we have to attach it onto our line so he can take that back up. When sailboats enter a lock, a messenger line will be thrown to the boat with a heavy weight in it called a monkey's fist. Watch your head. Yes, we have to protect our solar panels too. That's right, we're going to make up a solar yeah. panel yeah. protection. The line handlers on board must have a hand line ready with a secure loop tied in it, which they put the messenger line through and tie a bowline with it, so the shoreman can pull the line back and easily untie the knot on the messenger. The shoreman will then walk your hand lines forward with you. It's also important to practice how the hand lines should be controlled when locking through. Underneath once. Around the corner, around the back straight, but then across. Across. And then around the horn. And if you need another one, you could do that. Good. Yep. No locks, no locking turns. Right. And then you can always quickly, someone says, let it out, let it out. You can yep. just, just do that. 
It's critical that each person who will be handling a line has practiced and demonstrated their understanding. Things can go wrong fast, so everyone needs to be competent. Yeah, yeah. Playing it out like that. Yeah. Sure. And then you can Should always sure. kind of let's, grip let's it. Let's try it from the start again. Okay. And finally, the day arrives, February 27th, the start of our two-day transit of the Panama Canal. What are you doing, Cheryl? Well, I am getting dinner ready before we head out. Uh, part of the deal with the advisor coming aboard is that we have to provide a good hot meal. So I've prepared a meal for all of us, of course, and I thought it's just easier if it's ready to go and just heat up because we're going to be busy with the lines and looking at the beautiful scenery going by and interesting engineering. Wonderful idea. We're all excited to get going today. It's our big start to our trip. Thank you for your help. Oh yes, I just wanted to uh, wish you all a, a nice passage in person, you know? Well, we feel well prepared. You really made sure that we knew what we needed to do and we Good. got schedule and I'm just cooking up a wonderful meal for the advisor. Please, uh, if you have any, any left over <laughs> tomorrow, all right. okay, you can keep a little from you. Awesome. Remember to put the best guys at the bar, okay? And if you are going to go raft it, then you put the two best guys, one at the bar, one at the stern. Looking forward to the Pacific. Yes. All right. Okay, guys. All right. Bye bye now. All right. Okay. Bye. We're uh, just about to head out to Transit to Panama Canal. You look all dressed and ready to go. What are your thoughts? Uh, I'm hoping that I can reflect as much white sunlight as possible and stay cool and that I don't mess anything up. <laughs> We're going to be transiting in the evening with sunset and nighttime. You guys. Uh, have any thoughts on that? Pretty good, since I'm getting a nice bird right here. I'm looking forward to a little nighttime. Yeah, and I think the sunset's going to be beautiful. I think it would be a great time yeah. for you. Just going to take one last look around the deck. Yeah, we're ready to go. We've got lines flaked out at the bow. We've done a bunch of things to try to make the boat ready to go through the canals. We've moved our dinghy back, which we keep on deck here. So we've moved that back a little bit. Took off our Genoa sheet so you can walk around more easily. We've got the lines ready to go. The lines must be a minimum of 120 feet long and between 7 8 inches and 1 and a half inch diameter. We paid 120 US for the rental of good lines and fenders through our agent. Fenders aren't yet in place but they're nearly ready. Say goodbye to our skateboarding marina manager. Skateboarding with a pole, hey! How are you doing man? How are you doing Juanjo? Getting ready to cast you off dude. Yeah we're leaving in a couple minutes. I'm not a bad man, I'm just covering for the sun. <laughs> I should wear that. I like yeah. that it says Hulk too, that's really cool. Hands off help. I like the shoes, boss. Yeah, you haven't seen the socks. Wait, what socks you got today? Avocado. Alright. Avocado. Bring it on. <laughs> Those are pretty sexy things. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful. Yeah, Thank you so sure. much for a super, oh. super welcome that you all gave us here and then so much great support while we've been here. Glad so. to have you here. Hope you have a safe crossing and enjoy it. As per instructions, we head out from the marina into Limon Bay at 4 p.m. to await the arrival of our advisor just outside the marina entrance. This area is known as the Flats. We'll take a Canal Authority advisor aboard here to guide us, then proceed to the entrance of the canal, where we'll raft with two other yachts, then together lock through the three chambers of the Gatun locks this evening. We'll rise 87 feet, or over 26 meters above sea level, to Lake Gatun, where the advisor will leave us and we'll moor for the night. The next day we'll cross the lake and lock down to the Pacific. We'll cover day two in part three of this video series. There are many ships at anchor in Limon Bay, and we get a good look as we circle around while waiting for our canal advisor to arrive. There are some derelict ships out here as well, and this one looks like it's been here for quite some time. We're not out for long when we see an official-looking Panama Canal Authority vessel approaching us, and we prepare to welcome our advisor aboard. Vessels over 65 feet are appointed pilots who come aboard, take command of the ship, and pilot it through the canal. But vessels under 65 feet like ours, at 48 feet, are appointed a Canal Authority advisor who offers advice only to the captain and crew. An advisor doesn't take command of the vessel or the captain's responsibilities. I am free to decline the advice of the advisor if I feel it will put the boat or crew in peril. Welcome aboard. We 
are delighted to welcome aboard today's advisor, Hector. Hector will guide us through the three steps of the Gatun locks this evening. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's about six miles from the anchorage to the entrance of the Gatun locks, the first set of locks in the canal. So this is the ship we're going to be traveling with today. Advisors also manage communications with the lock operators and other canal personnel, including pilots on big ships if necessary. Today is a big day. We are leaving the Atlantic Ocean, basically the Caribbean Sea Atlantic. We're going out of that right now as we're heading into the first lock in the Panama Canal. They want to send bow and stern, and then we send spring lines. Yeah. The same thing in this bow side. And stern and spring. Uh, yeah. They perfect. want to send bow and stern, so you may, you don't need to send lines to the wall. They want to send lines to the wall. But we're not using these lines to no. the wall. They're so beautifully set up, though. <laughs> <laughs> We've been practicing We've been and practicing everything. all day. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> Maybe tomorrow. <you're> <laughs> Start of a new chapter, babe. Very exciting. New ocean. Rafting up can be a challenge, especially if there are language barriers and you're doing it mid-channel. If you have trouble, just let go and come around again. And you put it insecure. We got the stern secured, but our neighbor's foredeck crew missed the toss for the bow line, so we'll have to let them go and try again. This time the bow line is secured, and we prepare for the third boat to raft up. We've been chosen as the middle yacht since we're the largest boat, have the most experience, and are the most maneuverable with our thrusters. Once we're secured with bow and stern lines, we need to tie spring lines to stop the boats moving back and forth alongside each other. With the boats linked like this, I should be able to maneuver the whole raft as a single unit. Being the center yacht is a bit of a disappointment for our crew since they have been practicing their knots and line handling skills and now line handling will be managed by the crews of the yachts rafted on the outside of us. But who knows what tomorrow will bring. And as we're entering there's a ship coming out the other side. And we're leaving the Atlantic behind. The messenger line that a shoreman throws is weighted with lead in a tightly knotted rope ball called a monkey's fist. Goodbye, Atlantic Ocean! Goodbye, Atlantic Ocean. Goodbye, Caribbean. We'll be ascending 87 feet above sea level tonight, and going up is always the most challenging due to the turbulence which pulls the boats around. Notice we've lashed cockpit cushions over the solar panels to protect them from the flying monkey's fists. It's getting dark as we progress through the chambers, but everyone is doing great. Each lock takes us about 20 minutes.
Moving on to the next lock, the railway mules remain connected to the ship to keep it centered. We remain rafted together and the shoremen move with us, holding the four lines connecting our raft to the shore. We move forward about 1,000 feet to the next lock. Entering the third lock, everyone's got their routines worked out and we're all more relaxed. Our ship, Baltic Autumn, feels like an old friend, but soon we'll say goodbye since he will carry on through the rest of the canal while we're required to moor at Lake Gatun for the night. We're heading out of the last lock. That was exciting, so the last of three. We're up at Gatun Lake level now, 85 feet above the Atlantic. And we're just coming out of the lock now, so we get to go and find a little spot. Apparently there's a buoy we tie up to, or raft up to. So first we break up our raft once we get out of uh, the lock. We're trying to keep us in the middle as we get out of here, as I'm, at this point I'm steering the whole raft and pushing us forward. And then we'll detach all the lines and we're good to go. Goodbye little mules. Okay, release the bow with the third part. Yes, thank you. A pleasure. Very successful. We didn't crash. <laughs> so now Hector heads off home. We get to spend the night on the mooring. And then tomorrow morning early, perhaps uh, eight or so, we'll find out whether we're going first off or if because now there's four boats here and we can't go four all together, so maybe two and two, and we'll find out that uh, tomorrow morning. Very exciting day. I miss you tomorrow. Thank you, Hector. Bye. It's really been How fun. How can I see that video? We, YouTube. I will give you our YouTube channel. <laughs> yes, you're show, great. show it to my, my students. Oh, oh. It's been a great day and a highlight has been working with and getting to know Panamanians bye, like Hector. Bye, 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 thank you. Bye, Hector, thank you so much. Join us next time as we conclude our transit through the Panama Canal on day two, where we take you across Lake Gatun, through the majestic Culebra Cut, then descend to sea level through the Pedro Miguel and Miraflores locks to reach the Pacific Ocean. If you enjoyed this, please click that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And finally, a big thank you to members of our Distant Shores Cruising Club on Patreon for your support making this video.